So the question is, how do we know the difference? How do we know the difference from reality and from watching, say, a movie? Or more so even now with modern technology, with VR, the ability to immerse your your vision, your mind into your environment. And the reason I even bring this up, welcome everybody to the 72nd installment of The Bobby Kudo Show, is because I believe we're being exposed to different ideas, things that we wouldn't normally see unless you live under a rock. You know, Rihanna's performance at the Super Bowl was highly criticized with, you know, religious, demonic innuendos, Illuminati. What is, if that's the case, no difference than, you know, I just happen to be you know, reading and Kelsey Graham has got a movie coming out, something to do with religion and faith. I believe it was in relation to a uh, religious movement of the 1960s. Are we in the middle of a culture, religious war? Is that, is that what's happening? Are we, you, know, you see this more and more, the conversation of, of children being, being misu- mistreated, misused. You wonder how that affects society and how we get to this point where, you know, we're, we're allowing, you know, regardless of anything, never want to get into any gender wars or uh, sexual preference uh, conversations. Cause to me, I believe to each his own, but when you expose children to certain things, I think we need to draw a line and not to come into the show this way today, but I just think it's important that we have this conversation because if you are just of normal mind, you know, I don't, I don't believe that in any way, shape or form, we should force our children uh, to experience uh, our ideas and our poisons. That's, that's fair. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't expose them to that because in the, in the first five years of a, of a child's life, that's where they learn everything. They, they learn who they're going to be. They, there's a, there's a fundamental inherent sense of existence that takes place when a child reaches the age where they can, you know, go to school that, that fifth year of their life. But up until that, from that moment they're conceived from there, when they, when they breathe that air for the first time, the, 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 the neurons in the mind are just, they're just exploding, exploding. And, you know, it, it is important to, to raise a generation of children that are open-minded to ideas and are free to, are free to express themselves whichever way they see fit. But I don't see how having, you know, these, um, there's, there's no other way to put it. It's, it's almost like pedophilia driven events. And you, you, you watch it and they say to myself, is this staged? Could this be real? Is this a man dressed in drag, lap dancing this this three year old little girl in a chair, and everybody's clapping and applauding? And she's confused. She has no idea. She's so confused. This poor baby, this poor child, is absolutely terrified. Has no idea what is taking place. None. And so, you know, I don't. You know, they say the parents, the parents. You know, this is more than the parents, ladies and gentlemen. This is more than the parents. This is us fundamentally, as a society realizing what we will accept and what we will not accept, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. We want to, we want to raise a generation of children that are going to change the world, going to make the world a better place. But that's not what we're doing. We're, we, have, we have people, I'm not even going to say we, because I'm not even going to include myself in this, but there are people who are having sex change operations on, on infants. These are babies. I just don't understand how it is like anyone. And, when, and shame, if, if this is... You know, if, 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 if no one else feels this way, please send me a message, the Bobby Kudo Show, gmail.com. And, and ex- ex- please explain to me, explain to me how we are making a, a, a next generation, a better generation. You know, I had the most wonderful opportunity to spend some time with some wonderful people this weekend. And uh, happy birthday, Meg. I had some conversation. You know, and it's amazing the conversations that you have. And one of those conversations we were talking about China and, w- and what China is doing and what China is, what, listen, China. Okay, step back, okay? Step back. When we talk about Mother Nature, when we talk about evolution, you know, you think you watch Natural Geographic, you watch Discovery Channel, and you, you got the elephants, right? The elephants are out there, and you know, it's, it's always the biggest elephant. It's always the strongest elephant. It's always the elephant with the best genes that mates with the other elephants, right? And if there's a, if there's a stronger, bigger elephant, that elephant challenges that elephant and then they, they battle it out and the, it's always the strongest gene. It's always the, that's mother nature. That's the way nature is written. And some of you may take offense to this because you have to, you have to really, you have to really realize the consequences of accepting an idea like this. But I'm just, I said, I'll throw it out there. You don't have to accept it. 
If a deer is born in the woods with three legs, the mother walks away. Evolution takes the, take, takes care of the rest. I will tell you this from personal. I am alive. I believe that I am able to breathe air today uh, because of medicine. Without without medicine, I was I've been sick a couple of times in my life, and I'm sure whether it had been pneumonia or a flu, or I would have died of, of something, some some ailment. You know what I mean? Like I I believe that, and even you know some of the some of the some of the vaccines that that help us and protect us from certain. Uh, b- but with that said, without that medicine. What happens to the population? Who who continues? What is what is the what is the what does the population look like? Is it a, is it a a nature driven evolution of people that are continuously getting better and better and better? Does that what does that sound like to you? Does that sound almost weird? Does that sound like a, an idea that that's unacceptable? That we would only let the strong continue and survive? That we wouldn't, you know, that we would say, hey, listen, we're going to abolish cancer treatments. Imagine that idea. Imagine that idea. Like, no more cancer treatments. If you get cancer, you unfortunately, you die. What if I told you that's what China's doing? What if I told you that, that China is playing nature, Mother Nature? What if I told you that China is building the, the, the evolutioned, perfect human being? Because that's what they're doing. They're literally pairing people genome. You know, you go, you take a Spit in a bottle, right? They check your DNA. They they literally they 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 match you. They say, "Hey, listen, you, person A, you are a perfect match for a person B to make a perfect alpha human. No disease, all the characteristics of of the, the dangers of those. Like you know, you know, and that's what China's doing. I know this is this is really a hard pill to swallow, guys. And I know this is we're probably we're really in, we'll go. With, this is out there, and I'm I'm taking a chance here because I really want you all to know and understand the power of the mind. Because that's what this is all about. I asked, they opened the show with, like, how, how do you know the difference? What's real? What's not real? These are all electrical impulses going to your brain, firing off in your brain. Electrical impulses, nothing else. Everything we feel, everything we taste, everything we hear, everything we do is electrical impulses that are firing in your brain, your perception of the world. So when I tell you that China is, is literally breeding alpha humans... And we, a lap dancing, three-year-old little girls. Meanwhile, China has universities, camps, huge universities, where all their children go. And I just happened to be catching, I caught a video, I should, I should share it on the Bobby Kudo show, of what looked to be probably between four and seven-year-old children, all perfectly aligned in these ginormous classrooms. And they all had a firearm, a pistol, in front of them. And at the command of their their teacher, their professor, huh, as quickly as you could see, they literally tear the gun down apart in pieces on the desk. Hands down by their legs. And then they had a second command. Huh, bah. Well, that's my terrible Chinese, but these kids immediately, as quickly as your eyes can blink, reassemble the firearm and place it in front of them. I tell you this because these... Seven to nine year olds, these six to nine year olds, these are the these are the people that your children are competing with. This is a global market. The United States of America is a consuming nation. We consume. That's what we do. We don't our production is almost almost nil in comparison to our consumption. These are the the, the Chinese, these kids, these are these are the kids that you're that your kids are competing with directly, directly, directly. And so what does that mean for us? You know, we, we talk about <clears throat> the news will have you believe many things. Look in the sky, there's a balloon. It's floating. Meanwhile, we really need to realize, because this is a this is a full stop. This is an absolute full stop. You you cannot you cannot believe for one second that critical race theory is the solution, the solution to our GDP. Our production, our manufacturing, our, our global presence as a, as a leading nation, the idea that all these other countries are no longer going to be using the dollar to buy and sell oil is very scary to all of you. I'm not a financial advisor. I would never give you financial advice, but I would, I would, my advice to anybody is liquid. You want some gold, gold and property would be the way, would be, would be the way to go. Because once, once the, you may not know this, but once the oil, when, once the once these other nations stop buying crude oil, 
with the American dollar than the, the American dollar is built on debt. It just, and it just won't, there's nothing left. So caution, just keep in mind. And again, I just, we're a little over the place today, but this is very important because I think we all need to open our eyes. We are at a critical point in our society, in our existence, where we are talking about religion. Religion is back. Religion's making a comeback, everybody. Good and evil. Is is this is this on purpose? Is this purposeful? Is this the way it's always been? Have we not seen this? How is this all of a sudden? You know, I was born uh, I was born Catholic. You know, went to Sunday school and believed in Jesus and believed in faith and and the, the way we were created. And you know, I I always and, and I always listen. And I, not, not that I don't believe. I'm not saying I don't believe. I believe in the universe and I believe that there is amazing. Uh, vibrations and energies at, at, at work that I could never even comprehend at this point at, at quantum levels of understanding that I, maybe David O'Donnell can help us out. Maybe I'll have him back on the show. But there are things that I don't understand. But but what I do understand is you you really can only, you know, control is always a state of mind, but you can only control what's what's within your reach. You know, you, you can't you can't punch anything further than the reach of your, 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 your throat, your fist, right? You just can't, you can't, you can't do that. So, but if you, if you man that, if you decide, which is the purpose of today's show, if you decide to commit to the best version of yourself, like you can't, there's no way, there's no way to control someone who is at at the top alpha shape, like undoubtable, like you're you're undoubtable, undeniable, truly just, just, and and whatever that looks like, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be 500 pushups a day, but, but if you feel that you are the best version of yourself. If you commit that your your actions are not not committed by what you what you saw in the news this morning, and that that all of this noise, all the, like that that doesn't drive you. What drives you is the understanding of what's in what's in your reach, the people you touch every day, the information that you transfer every day, what you choose to really want to. Right? How do we make each other better? How do I help you? How do you help me? You know, this this may sound like out of the ordinary, but it, 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 it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. You know, I choose to go and experience my life. And, and wherever I go, I try to appreciate the people and the things that I that I come in contact with. I, I, I really enjoy talking to people. I really enjoy different personalities. I really I've always I've always I've always done that. I've always enjoyed it. You know, whether you're the Uber driver or my waiter or waitress or, you know, you whoever you are, it doesn't I want to I hi. How are you today? You know, and being out and looking around, you, just, you don't see that. It's like we've lost that connection from people and people just want, and then every video you see, it's somebody fighting or punching somebody. Like, what is all that? What is it? It's, it's angry. I think people are just bubbling up. I think it's at the top where we don't even know. We don't even know. I, I, I could say, what, why are you, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? I don't know. I don't know. And we don't. But it seems like we're so preoccupied with w- what is out of our reach, the things that are out of our, our throw that, It doesn't even matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, it is all electrical impulses to your brain. It's the way we interpret vibrations and sounds. You know, we assume certain things. You get a text message from someone. You're assuming, you're assuming what you're reading. Whatever mood you're in. You know, if you're in a new relationship, you're going to interpret that text message a million different ways. You will. And you'll dissect it a million different ways. When, why, how, why do we do that? Because to us, it matters, right? We're trying to, our brain, the survival tool, we talked about this in 71, the brain, the survival tool is trying to save you. You're trying to fill in all the blanks. It's no different than, you know, people look at art or those prints, you know, like the little shrink and they get the, like it looks like a smushed paint. And our brains automatically try to try to make shapes. It automatically tries to, oh, it looks like a butterfly. Why? Why why does that happen? Because that's how our brains work. Our brains are always trying to fill in the blanks. Our brains will always try to find the easiest route to interpret what we're seeing. And sometimes, sometimes we get misinformation. That is why, you know, we are reactive, right? We react. Oh, but then, you you know, hours later, you're sitting on the couch thinking about it going, damn it. Why did I react that way? Or, or I would have said this, I would have said that, right? When you're stewing on it, like somebody says something to you that maybe was clever, or t- took you off your game and you didn't have a good response, but then all of a sudden, like four hours later, you're like, shit, I should have said this, right? How many times does that happen? Well, that's, that's the way your brain works. 
Your brain is trying to figure this all out. Your brain is literally constantly working. That's what it does. Problem, 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 problem. Solve, 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 solve. That's what it does. And the, the people that are successful and the, the people that enjoy life, life the most are the, are the ones that have the ability to turn that on and off. The ability to control their thoughts. The, the ability to realize that, you know, I might not have to stop thinking about these things, but I, I can replace these thoughts with positive thoughts. And that's, you know, that's what I try to do for myself. I mean, even for me, like I'm a morning, I have morning anxiety. I'm one of these people that wakes up in the morning and my adrenaline is pumping. Like, okay, here we go. It's, it's, we're going to do the day. Come on. What is it? What are you going to do? And I, I find myself even now, okay, wake up, Bobby first, wake up. And then I try to process, okay, today is Monday, Tuesday, whatever day it is. And okay, what do you have today? And I already know because I looked at my calendar from the day before. You know, so I, so I have an idea, so, but I just, I have to remind myself, I'm just waking up, my body's waking up, all right, the neurons are firing in my brain, and I find that it helps. I mean, not to say it gets rid of the anxiety completely, but, you know, and even in my life at this point, I'm going through some big changes, and so there's a lot of, there's a lot of new, new things, new feelings that I'm kind of trying to work through, but I'm working through those, just like you can, you know, and not, not to get too, too drawn out into too many subjects today because I, I don't want to do that. But I, I really wanted to just touch on a couple of things that I think are important. And the reason, you know, we talked about Hollywood, right? We're talking about the things that in the VR, we talk about how, you know, what, what are we perceiving? What are we watching on TV? You know, if you haven't had a chance, and I'm just, I'll bring it up. I mean, it's probably old news to you and you probably already know, but there's a movie, White Noise, and it's on Netflix. And this, and it was filmed in Palestine, Ohio. It was filmed there. It was filmed there like six months before the accident took place there. Unless you guys don't know, there was a major derailment in Ohio and tons of toxic chemicals and just like we're talking Ecuador level toxins and pollutants and just the absolute rape of Mother Nature over there. But anyway, they filmed the movie six months before. They, they, they were, there were people, people that, ex, that were literally experienced, like lived the experience of that their realm were in the movie. They were extras in the movie. And so the reason I bring this up is, is it, was it, is it, is this all intentional? How does that happen? What, what are the odds? What are the odds? Because if you are any mathematicians out there, can you just calculate the odds that they would film a movie and then six months later that, that same catastrophic event, trail derailment event takes place in the same exact place that they filmed the movie. Why would that be that way? How could that be? What are the odds and chances that that, that, that happens? Explain. Because I, this is something that I'm asking myself. It doesn't make any sense to me. It, it just doesn't. So these are the things that I kind of, I wonder about. And I say, gee, well, it's creepy. It's, it's, it's almost creepy. But I, I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is, you know, we, we tell our children, our children watch these, you know, like a, Iron Man, you know, Tony Stark is one of my favorite. I like Iron Man. You know, and as a kid, you watch those movies, and you're like, well, I, I, I could be Iron Man. Kids, I believe I'm right. We tell our kids, yeah, yeah, you're a superhero, right? You're a little cape, you're Superman, right? A little Batman mask, I'm Batman. Kid pretends you're Batman, right? We tell our kids it's okay to mimic these movies. Okay, so what about the flip side of that? What about the movies that we're watching? Is there a reality to those movies, right? Is there a sense of experience, let's say, a sense of experience in those movies. When you watch a movie and you become immersed and you're like, wow, what a, what a great movie. What a fantastic film. That was a work of art. What is that experience for you? Did you, did you live that experience? Right? Is there, is there neurons? Is, are, are there brain patterns in your brain that that were stimulated by that movie and that you form an opinion, you create, you, you, right? I, you know, the point of me saying this is, is, you know, we watch it. It's, it's on, it's on the big screen. It's on TV. We were consuming Netflix and Hulu and we're consuming all of this, this media, this information. Do, does that help us form our opinions? Does that, this is important because we tell ourselves, oh no, it's just television. I, I know the difference. I know the difference. Why is it that? Like Jeffrey Dahmer, like that whole, that whole series. It was the number one series. In, why, why was that so interesting to people? Why is that so interesting to people? 
because it's a devastating story. It's catastrophic. It's murder. It's rape. It's cannibalism. It's all, like, check all the boxes. But somehow America is just consumed by it, right? They watch it all. They watch it. Number one, but I'm, don't, listen, I'm not criticizing. I watched it too. My question is, is what's the experience? What's the human experience to that? What, 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 what pathways in your brain are you creating? Because that's, that's what we do. That's what the brain does. You know, if we didn't tell ourselves it was a movie, then the brain wouldn't know. Because the experience is the same. You know, and this brings me to the beginning of the episode. What are we, what are we doing to our children? They don't know the difference. Their brain doesn't know the difference. Is this real? Is this not real? Their experience is the human experience. They experience it. It's their cognitive being. It's self-awareness. That's the difference between us and artificial intelligence. We are aware. We are aware that we exist. We know we are here. Some of us I question, but for the most part. Full circle in all this, ladies and gentlemen, our children, this is the future. Your children are competing with a race of, of people that ha, ha, are literally consumed with creating the best versions of themselves, both on a microscopic level all the way through. Like it's, it's communism, but they're in. Either you're in or you're out, right? And, and I'll say this, and I won't talk about China ever again on the show, but this was important today. Understand what we know about China is what we know about China. What we know about China is what we're told. What the news tells us. And very rarely do you get these, these glimpses of information. You know, I was talking to some, some people. And they had no idea that the Uyghurs existed. And this is like, I'm not, this isn't like, oh, you know, I bet you most of you don't know what the Uyghurs are. With a U, Uyghurs. Google that when you have a chance. China's going to be all over this episode, guys. But, but Google that. And, and, and read that. Because that's part of their process. That's part, that's part of the Chinese process. This is what they're doing. This is what, this is what they're doing. They'll genocide. They don't care. They don't, listen, there's no race. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's no race in China. They don't care. Everybody's white. You see any black Chinese people? Like, do you see that there in China? You see that? No, you don't. Does anybody wonder why? Does anybody wonder why? Remember, you remember hearing stories. I know this. I heard these stories when I was very young. That China, if you had a baby girl, that they would, that they don't want girls. That they would make you abort. And then there was the, you know, one child per couple rule. Like these, this was all the beginning of that. And now they're like so far past it. Like they're literally breeding superhumans over there. They really are. And they have the ability, because they've already shown us, they have the ability to, to, to shut us down. And you know, the funny thing was, is the question was, so why don't they take us out? Right? Well, because, because well, let's take a step back where I said earlier in the show, we are consumers. You know, without, without us consuming, right? Without us consuming, and China doesn't have, right? We, cons we, have, we consume more from China than anybody else from anyone else. You know, even and people are like, oh, I don't buy Chinese. I, 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 buy, I buy American. Okay, so how about your penicillin? Huh? All, all your medications. All your medications are cut with, with all kinds of stuff that comes from China. There's no way around it. If China said, hey, we're not going to send you stuff anymore, the United States would shut down. We, couldn't, we, couldn't, we could not sustain the, the needs of, of our people without China. So keep that in mind. So that's why China doesn't take us out. Because they need us. They need us because we feed them. So that answers that question. So it's almost become, we become, you know, we, we become the, con the consumption machine for them. I know this, this, guys, this, this is probably not what you expected, but it, I think it's important. I think this is, without question, something that we have to really absolutely consider. And this is, and, and this is the show. This is, we are starting from ground zero here. I'm, I'm talking to you about your kids. I'm talking to you about like making the best versions of yourself, like setting the standard and saying, like, you know, <laughs> there are things that are appropriate and there are things that are inappropriate. I think, you know, we, we, I, I believe that children don't see race. They don't care. They don't care. I know they don't. And I can say this with, with, with conviction 
because I grew up with my heroes like Michael Jordan, like Martin Luther King. These were these were these people were heroes. I was taught in school that these were heroes. I I was glued watching. Like I was I was, but I love Michael Jordan, so I watched to watch him and Scottie Pippen play. Like those were right. So don't talk to me about that. They don't know if we don't tell them. They don't even know. Like they're not even they're not even thinking that way. They're not even thinking that way. And so just let, I, my message, just let them be kids. And don't interfere so much. You know, I, I garden. I love to garden. And one of the toughest things to learn about gardening is that you got to just leave it the fuck alone. If you give it too much water, it drowns. If you don't give it enough water, it starves. If you don't give it enough sunlight, it wilts. If you give it too much sunlight, it wilts. There's a balance. And that balance is just let it be. Intervene where you need to. Teach these kids the fundamentals. I believe, and I've always believed this, and I will always say this, and I, and I don't think that it's this is impossible, but I say we teach our children what they want to learn. You know, Steve Jobs said it best. We don't hire smart people to make them dumb. We hire smart people because they, we want to be smarter. I'm not going to hire you, right? Four years ago. Listen, four years ago. Okay, that's fine. What, what experience do you have? None. What I, what I see in you is that you showed up for four years. You went to college for four years. You showed up, right? You were there at least enough times to, to graduate. That's the only, that matters what matters. As an employer, as I'm hiring you, this is what matters to me. Whatever the fuck degree you have, really, it doesn't matter. At least I know you have a common understanding of what we do here, right? But understand that like you're going to learn. the You're going to learn our ways. You're going you're gonna to be part of something great. You're going to teach us and we're going to teach you. These are the, right? This is how we build the best version of an American. From the ground up, we, can, we, can, we commit and we invest into our children. And you guys can argue all you want about, you know, bathrooms and toilets and, and like all of this bullshit. It's, it's all noise. This isn't helping our children. Let's not forget the damage we created with COVID and these kids being taught from a fucking computer screen for how, like... Th- these kids are broken. Ladies and gentlemen, our children are broken. They're confused. They, they, they don't even, like pronouns? Are you kidding me? Like how? I don't even know how. It's landmines, everybody. It's landmines. I remember my son, AJ, being in high school and saying that. Like, dad, I don't really say anything. I'm like, why? Is it because it's, it's not worth it? Like, I don't, if I say something like this, and these people have to be in these, and, and I get it. And I get it. But also being silent isn't isn't the solution, right? What do you do about that? But you're also you're, you're almost like set up to fail at any moment. Like you you can't I can't take a step to the left. I can't st- take a step to the right because these there's all there's so much separate. And I believe that that's the way. That's the way we we are being suppressed. We are we are we you know again I hate to even to mention this but the Holocaust. Like the people were persuaded into believing that the Jews were horrible people and they weren't. But that's but the the media the, the don't forget COVID right. If you're not vaccinated, you you can't get medicine. If you're not vaccinated, then you can't be my friend, and you can't have turkey with me and my family. Listen, that happened to us. We that proved it. The power of the mind again. Here we go back to the mind, right? Back to the power of the mind. We are all victims to the brain, and uh, we've got some people that control the information, and they are masters. Listen clearly. They are masters at manipulating information, and it, it's daunting. And when I'm gonna. This is one last thing, and I'm gonna go out. And this is because I'm. I, I'm only saying this because I don't want anybody to accuse me of being xenophobic. Because I'm not. TikTok. Can we, let's talk about TikTok for a second. The government right now is trying to ban TikTok, they're saying that they, they're they're abusing their privacy rules and they're listening to us and they're manipulating us. Okay, so listen, this is what I'm going to say about that. And then you guys can you can do whatever you want. This is just me. Listen closely. Listen. There's a reason why TikTok is the the most popular and most used social media app in the world right now. You know why? Because they figured out the Chinese have figured out the algorithm. Facebook can't figure it out. Instagram can't figure it out, right? None of these none of these social media apps like Twitter, they they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to reproduce it. But all these social media companies, they all own, they own the government. So they're like, hey guys, listen, let's tell everybody that TikTok is collecting information. Look, they all collect information. Google collects information. Would I rather have China? It doesn't even matter at this point. 
It doesn't even matter at this point. If they want your information, they have it. Let's not forget Snowden, ladies and gentlemen, the NSA. If they want it, they will take it. It's just that simple. You cannot hide. If you have a cell phone, if you're listening to this show right now, then they have the ability to get your information. So let's get past that bullshit. Just let it go. It's over. They, if they want your information, they got your information. So explain to me again why TikTok is dangerous and why TikTok needs to be shut down and taken off. Why is that? Think about that for a second. Well, it's because the other social media, they can't compete. They can't compete. They can't beat them. They can't beat TikTok. So what do you do? You take them out. You go to Congress, you say that they're doing all this bullshit, and then Congress writes a bill, and then Congress tells you that you can only use TikTok 15 minutes a day. <laughs> do you, you see this? You Or you, you better conform. And, you know, at the end of the day, remember this. It's Apple and Google. Where else can you get an app? You can't. They own it. Google and Apple are the only two companies you can get an app from. Did you know that? Or did you even think about it? If Apple told you, hey, you can't have you, you can't have this app. Because they said so. Done. I mean, they threatened Twitter. They threatened Elon. They said they were going to remove it. They didn't. They didn't. But they, they, they threatened to. So where do you go? If you, if you own an Apple device, you don't have a choice. Like, so, the, you know, the, the monopoly, the, the, the trickery here in this monopoly is that truth, Google and Apple are completely two separate entities. This isn't like, like you have an option, like, right? Because they both have proprietary software. So I can't use a, I can't use an Apple app on a, on a Google phone and I can't use a Google app on an Apple phone, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's, this is all bullshit. Like there was no monopoly there. They own it. They own the information, ladies and gentlemen. And this is all about money. So listen, I'm not, just so you know, I'm, I'm on China's side on this one. I say leave TikTok alone. I happen to enjoy TikTok. Everybody I talk to enjoys TikTok. I think they figured out the algorithm, like I said. They, so you're always, you're always getting fed information that is, you're interested in, whatever fits your mood. You know, as soon as you like something, it knows it. It says, okay, you like this. And okay, but it's no different than anything else. They're just, they're just better at it. So just again, when you see the news and you hear this bullshit about the, look, I, I say, leave them alone. Free market. Let it be. Let it be. And you know, quite frankly, I think right now, between us, uh, TikTok is probably one of the best ways or sources of information. Uh, Twitter is pretty good, but I question it. Listen, Elon Musk is a very smart man. And everything he does is calculated. And sometimes I'm a little wigged out by that. So I don't know what his intentions are. Like, I, I feel like, you know what I feel like? I feel like Cal, when, when Ricky Bobby... Tells him that he's that he, that he forgives him, right? Ricky Bobby's like, "Hey, Cal, I'm, Cal, I'm sorry. You're my friend, and I didn't treat you right." And, and then Cal looks at him and goes, "I'm not quite sure how to take this, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna just walk away mad." That's what this is. Walk away mad because you don't know. You can't figure it out. We're all in this together. If we all commit to making the best versions of ourselves, like we we win. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate being here. Make sure you support the show at the Bobby Kudo Show at Gmail dot com. All the social media outlets. Go check it out. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week. And always remember that all roads lead here.